Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll look into um, post-structuralism and deconstruction. Well, post-structuralism, um, but before we begin, let us get this idea into our minds that post-structuralism and deconstruction are two very different things. While post-structuralism is something that, uh, that could be called a critique of structuralism, deconstruction is the end product i could safely say you could safely say that it is a, the end product of uh, all the intellectual uh, thinking uh, or intellectual exercise of post structuralism right so peter barry begins with the question whether post structuralism is a is a continuation or rebellion of structuralism now see post structuralists accuse structuralists of not having the courage of their convictions as in structuralist laid out all these ground rules saying that language is uh, is a medium with which we watch the world we look at the world or in fact it you know, language not merely reflects the world but constitutes it. it makes creates the world right but how far did they carry it out there were so many questions um, you know um, uh, that arose because of this this particular belief but the structuralists were unable to answer those questions so the post-structuralists tend to question the structuralists as to why they did not have the courage of the convictions and how why they could not answer the questions that arose because of their beliefs. Now the structuralists believe that how we see is what we see. This is the, this belief is further carried forward and is made the fundamental rule or the ground rule on which all post-structuralist belief rests. Okay, so you see. When we say how we see is what we see, what we are doing is we are according language a, a momentous task. Okay, we are we are um, the supreme power to um, create the world, to make the world, without which the world would not exist. So if we are going to rely so much, depend so much on language, with on language alone to see the world, and language itself is purely relational it's arbitrary you know it's not merely constitutive according to the structuralist language is arbitrary and relational as well so in that case if it is purely whimsical so i can accord meaning to just about anything or anyone then there is no standard at all right there is no fixed mark there are no ground rules there there is no reason behind it if it's purely arbitrary right so what happens i am thrown into a world okay i'm thrown into a world that is unreasonable arbitrary in the sense it is not you know it does not have any reason to it it is whimsical right it should not make any sense so in that case what would happen is if uh, the language itself is unstable and the world we are going to view through language or the world that this unstable language is creating cannot possibly be stable right so this post structuralist belief consequently is that we enter a universal of universe of radical uncertainty universe of radical uncertainty as in our whole universe seems to be uncertain our existence seems to be uncertain since we can have no access to any fixed landmark which is beyond linguistic processing and hence we have no certain standard by which to measure anything so there is nothing beyond linguistic processing nothing the world itself becomes linguistic right so what happens we don't have a fixed landmark all right everything is relational right see for instance uh, barry gives you the example of um, of sitting in a train you're sitting in a train and uh, the adjacent train moves so you have this feeling that okay there is a possibility that i am moving that my train is moving because and and you know but you can you cannot be certain about it you cannot be sure about it because the adjacent train could move too it's only when you see the platform a fixed landmark when you look at the platform only then would you be sure whether your train is moving or not right so without fixed point of reference against which to measure movement you cannot tell whether you're moving at all so the the, uh, the post structuralist belief is that we are now living in a universe because of structuralism we are living in a universe that is 
absolutely uncertain because it is purely linguistic and linguist language itself does not have any fixed landmark it is purely relational and it does not have any standard against which you can measure anything okay absolutely anything now ultimately we are living in this decentered universe decentered universe as in you don't know the margin from the center the, the certain the margins have moved to the center the center has moved to the margin because everything see uh, as in a space you know when when you go to space i mean i haven't been to space but it's just an example given by in space there is no gravity so you're not fixed anywhere everything floats about right so imagine the world floating about because the world is nothing but language the world cannot be seen other than through language and how is language language is not fixed it is not stable it is not it is purely relational one in relation to another everything is liquid it's a very liquid concept okay language is seen as a liquid floating concept all right so having no fixed intellectual reference points may plunge us into a gravity free universe where there is no fixed point where there is no upside down or right way up you don't know which way to go we cannot know where we are since all the concepts which previously defined the center and hence also the margins have been deconstructed so everything the center the margin everything has been deconstructed or undermined so we don't know which way to turn therefore we end up with a high anxiety about language high anxiety about language as in we are since language that medium on which we rely to see the world around us if that medium is unstable aren't we going to be a little anxious about it because see the structuralists they were quite certain about language okay they were certain about the world because it see it was a very scientific study they they scientifically proved that the world could be understood through language all right see it's merely the 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 uh, you know the approach that changes the idea remains the same it's merely the approach that changes from structuralism to post structuralism while structuralism seems to be more positive about the use of language to understand the world post structuralism is, you could you couldn't call it negative but it is more uncertain okay both rely on the same idea both rely on the same idea only thing is that the post structuralists feel more strongly about it all right so there is a high anxiety about language when where post structuralists are concerned mainly because of you rely on language to understand everything to know everything so without language nothing exists and language itself is relational arbitrary and you don't know whether this you know this linguistic relativity is going to give you any any uh, proper sense of the world around you right so this anxiety is more pervasive except for when we have normal today uh, there's uh, i've just made a mistake here it's supposed to be having for except for when we are having normal day to day exchange with people or situation we are familiar with except for when we are communicating with the people or communi communicating in a situation we are familiar with we are really anxious anxious about the words we use or choose to use <laughs> imagine standing upon a stage all of a sudden if you have stage fear okay stage fear is nothing but this anxiety anxiety about language okay you would be a very brilliant person you could you you would have a whole host of ideas in your head but when it comes to talking in front of strangers you're all tongue tied i mean that happens Uh, it happens to just not you but every one of us all of us unless unless we have accustomed ourselves or familiarized ourselves to that situation right so you see uh, consider this writing to a bank when you're writing to a bank don't you feel anxious about the kind of words you're going to choose or when you're writing when you're writing to some educational institution say for instance you're writing to your um teacher or to your principal dean whoever aren't you aren't you worried about what kind of words to choose when you're writing an essay and not merely copying essay from some website 
I'm talking about genuinely creating your own essays. When you're writing an essay, aren't you worried about the kind of words you choose to project your ideas, your thoughts, or a conversation with a stranger? When you're conversing with someone, someone you're not familiar with, uh, you don't want to be too inviting. At the same time, you don't want to be rude, right? You are, you're very anxious about the kind of words you choose. And sometimes that anxiety borders on fear, right? Or a letter of condolence, a very tricky situation. When you're writing to someone who's lost, lost their beloved, what do you do? You are very afraid of choosing the wrong sort of words, right? You don't want to be inadvertently rude to someone, right? Rude to someone who's already grieving, <laughs> yeah. So now observe, a sense of anxiety permeates all of these communications, which is most negligible in a familiar surrounding, or recipient so a sense of anxiety is is permeated okay it's 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 pervasive everywhere okay it permeates everything this is just a very small list you know Barry has given but otherwise even otherwise this anxiety seems to be existing everywhere <laughs> like even when you're talking to your spouses yeah okay forget your parents and your children you're comfortable with them you can talk to them of course you can talk to your spouse as well but one wrong word could create whole host of miscommunications and and you have this anxiety about not using certain words in in the presence right uh, for obvious reasons well observe or say okay cause of anxiety what causes this anxiety the language will possibly express things we hadn't intended. Now, we, when we speak of language, please keep in mind we're not merely talking about English language. We are talking about language in general. So any language for that matter could express things that we do not intend to express. We may convey, the language may convey the wrong impression. Wrong impression as in I, I may come off as someone oh, very... Uh, proud which I'm not right I may come off as being too humble while I'm not right it's it's quite possible you you, you may end up giving the wrong impression if you, you're going to an interview and you may end up giving the impression that you don't really care about whether you get a job or not that is quite possible because of the way you communicate right or it may betray our ignorance one word, one wrong word could show that I do not know anything. <laughs> well, or callousness. Callousness, it may reveal that I am hard-hearted. I may, I'm just being superficial. Uh, my kindness is entirely superficial. On the, on the, it's on, all on the surface. And underneath, I'm quite hard-hearted. I, I don't really care. Or it may betray my confusion. I am not sure about anything. It may betray that. Right? So... So obviously, obviously, we have a very high anxiety about language. Um, at least the post um conclude that a certain anxiety about language is created. Okay, they they uh, they are aware of it. Now the phrases that betray our lack of control over the linguistic system. See, language is beyond us. While C, uh, structuralism, structuralists believed that language could be used to understand the world, that language creates the world and, um, you know, it seems, they seem to come off as telling that language is under our control. Whereas the post-structuralists show that language is beyond our control, right? Now, the phrases that betray our lack of control over the linguistic system, like, you know what I mean. If you see my point... In a manner of speaking, generally, we tend to resort to these words indicating that I do not have full control of what I am saying. I may, okay, when I write it down, maybe even written word. Written word is not conclusive. I may intend to say something, but may, I may totally entirely end up saying something else. Right? This is a typical post-structuralist frame of mind which lies very much within attitudes and anxieties which most of us experience. So this is the typical post-structuralist frame of mind and uh, it, uh, it, it would help us to understand this basic idea, get into this mode before we proceed. So some basic uh, differences 
between post-structuralism and structuralism. We'll get to see here. First off, in terms of origin, where did it origin originate? Structuralism uh, originated in linguistics. Okay, so where is post-structuralism in philosophy? So you understand that structuralism and started from Saussure. We saw Saussure's understanding of language, how it worked, right? So he saw it as a system of science, and system of science is in the language itself. Uh, the, the the basic nature of language was such that it it could be used, or it is used to understand the world around us, right? And uh, the main objective of language, uh, whereas post-structuralists, their, their origin is basically on philosophy. So you see, philosophy it could be more uh, out of control than linguistics can be. All right. Now, um, structuralism looks for objective knowledge. No, objective knowledge as in it is, it is distancing itself okay, from the knowledge it gains. So, if we observe accurately, collect data systematically, and make logical deductions, then we can reach reliable conclusions. Scientific approach would be the basis, the method of approach is scientific, purely scientific, um, in, in terms of method, system, and reason. Whereas, when you look at the post-structuralism, it is more skeptical in nature. While you can acquire objective knowledge, the idea, the or uh, the aim, or uh, um, the belief of the structuralist that you could acquire objective knowledge through a uh, structuralist understanding, it is rather, you know, disrupted by this uh, post-structuralist uh, philosophy that tells you that you know uh, that all knowledge is 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 questionable. So it is more skeptical in nature and undercuts and questions commonsensical notions and assumptions. So whatever we consider as common sense, right? Whatever we consider as common sense or general assumptions that we have, everything is questioned when it comes to post-structuralist understanding. Um, and moreover, while it is scientific in approach and relies on a certain method and system and reason, post-structuralism does not have any method, right? It is. It begins by calling into questions. It basically questions everything. Calling into question things taken for granted, and regards confidence in scientific inquiry naive, and derives a certain pleasure from knowing for certain that we can't know anything for certain. You know, see any confidence in scientific inquiry, believing that you know anything could be understood scientifically itself is considered naive. Okay, considered foolish, and and it seems to derive a certain masochistic pleasure from knowing for certain that you know for certain that you, uh, you know, ultimately you know for certain that we cannot know anything for certain. You know, it's a paradoxical statement, but still conveys the full truth to some extent. Oh, see, again, I'm getting into all sorts of paradoxes here. Uh, you're fully conscious of the irony and paradox which doing this entails. The, the idea itself is, is uh, you know, contradictory, self-contradictory. In terms of tone and style, so basically uh, Peter Barry, um, you know, gives us some basic differences, theoretical differences in these four topics, with under these four topics, origin, tone and style, attitude to language and linguist uh, project, project by as an aim. So we've seen origin. When it comes to tone and style, what tone do they take? The structure, the structuralist take, uh, uh, you know, the tone of the structuralist is more abstraction and generalization. Structuralist writing is more abstract, uh, deals with more abstraction. Whereas the post-structuralist is more emotive and engaged. Okay, it is more detached. You could say the tone itself is detached, and this is more engaged and, uh, you know. Emotive. Now, well, uh, the, it is more detached, and there is a certain scientific coolness of tone. There, it is post-structuralist is more urgent and euphoric. Method, discrete steps, orderly exposition, complete with diagrams. It fixes on some material aspect of language, 
metaphor, etymology, some pun or illusion. See the difference? It is more orderly. It takes discrete steps. It, it, it does step-by-step -step exposition. Um, like, uh, remember what we did with the oval portrait or Mervyn Jones' Armitage. Yeah? It, it is more orderly. And it even seems to, you could even draw a diagram based on the method and the exposition of um, ideas. Whereas here, it is more, it fixes more on some material aspect. It takes up one particular aspect, some metaphor, some etymology of a certain word, or it, it would just fix on one particular pun and, and uh, you know, work in a euphoric and urgent manner. And it would be so emotive and engaged. It, it would be more chaotic sometimes. The style is neutral and anonymous, like scientific writing. Here it is flamboyant and self-consciously showy. Okay, see the difference here? As I said, structuralism and post-structuralism have their basis on the same one idea. But it is mainly the approach that varies. Now, as far as attitude to language is concerned, the structuralist attitude to language is that world is constructed through language and any access to reality possible only through linguistic medium. Orderly system, it is very orderly system, it is not chaotic, hence dependence on such system does not cause despair. As in, the, when you understand from the structuralist point of view that the world is constructed through, through language and the access to reality is possible only to, through linguistic medium. You understand that. And it is an ordered system. It is not chaotic. And when and you understand that you rely on this system to understand the world. So it does not really make you feel despair. Whereas post-structuralists are more fundamentalist. They understand that reality itself is textual. So any reality here, world is understood through language, world is constructed through language. Here what they say is reality itself is textual. So there is nothing outside text. When we, when we say nothing outside text, what we mean is there is nothing outside language. Okay. Anxiety about achieving any knowledge through language. So obviously, since it is not very orderly and it is more chaotic, you tend to develop an anxiety about this any any knowledge that you can uh, get through this language because ultimately what you feel is whatever knowledge you have received through this language through this medium itself is questionable verbal sign all verbal signs are floating free of the concept it is supposed to designate so there is spillage and slippage it's a very liquid idea so this linguistic liquidity defies any attempt to carry signification so when we speak of verbal sign being floating free, so every word could be understood only in relation to another word, right? So, and no word seems to be fixed. In that sense, what would happen? All, all words, all meanings are floating free, right? So everything is liquid. Language itself becomes a liquid concept. So there is more spillage and slippage and this liquidity, this, this liquid floating, um, you know, um, analogy is used here, ex excessively used in uh, post-structuralist uh, uh, approach. This linguistic liquidity defies any attempt to carry signification carefully from the giver to the receiver in the containers we call words. So whatever we call words, words have to hold certain signification, right? So as a giver, when I am giving a certain word to you with a certain intent, with a certain signification, that signification cannot be fully transferred to you, the receiver. Or if you are telling me something, if you are using certain words to say or convey certain signification, that signification is not carried to completely transferred to me. All right. So the words are like containers that carry certain signification. Meanings of words are unpure and hence contaminated. Some theoretical, then some some linguistic anxiety exists because of it. 
So try defining night without reference today or good without evil. There is slippage here. There is, you know, night spills into day. Day spills into night. So when you try to define night, you would all, you cannot do it without referencing today. You cannot define good without evil. Try doing that. Or it is interfered. It's not merely linguistic anxiety, as I have stated here. It is more the impurity of or, or the contamination of language itself. It is interfered by its own history or obsolete sense. So any word, for instance, uh, Barry gives the example of guest, how it had its etymological origin in hostess, hostess meaning enemy or a stranger. So inadvertently, we tend to attribute a certain negative connotation to the word guest. Okay. The main aim of structuralism is to question our way of structuring and categorizing reality and prompts us to break free of habitual modes of perception or categorization. But it believes that we can thereby attain a more reliable view of things. So basically what a structuralist does, the aim of, or objective of a structuralist is to question the way of structuring and categorizing reality and that in turn would help us have a more reliable view of things. Whereas post-structuralists distrust the notion of reason and the idea of the human being as an independent So nothing is structured, nothing is kept, nothing can be put into uh, definite categories as such. So they prefer the notion of dissolved or constructed subject. Okay, so everything is dissolved. Everything is merely constructed. Individual is a product of social and linguistic forces. So as in as in individual, every individual is a product of social and linguistic forces. It does not have any sense of its own, only tissue of textualities, right? So this, as opposed to the structuralist understanding, post-structuralist is more, um, they're more re unreasonable. In fact, they refute, they, 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 they disrupt and refute the very existence of reason, right? As compared to the structuralist who merely wish to break free of certain habits, okay? And break free of those habits and restructure so that you could understand uh, or you could get a better view, better understanding of certain things or, or of, uh, you know, get a, get a newer understanding of, of certain things. So I believe this is all for today. Um, we'll continue with our with with the rest.